Now, I understand why many wrestling fans aren't exactly on the Roman Reigns bandwagon, why many of them are fearful of Roman Reigns getting that Royal Rumble victory, going on in main eventing WrestleMania. I get it, and I understand it, and I'm not saying those fears aren't unfounded. You look at a guy and you say, is he really ready for that spot? If this guy can't carry a promo, how the hell could he carry a company on his back? You look at the fact that he fits kind of the mold of what you think the WWE ultimately loves and desires in all of their top guys. And you, you, you have nightmares and flashbacks and what have you, and you're very fearful of that. And I understand it. I get it. However, here's what I don't get are the wrestling fans that are coming on here and talking about this big monster Roman Reigns push and talking about how it's the worst thing ever and how this guy totally doesn't deserve this push that he is getting. Now, grant you, in 2014, you could see there was a seismic shift in the way The Shield was being featured in terms of the spotlight was going much more on Roman Reigns. They were featuring him in a certain way as if he was to be the big star to come out of the group, what have you. He was the one that got a title shot when he wrestled in that fatal four-way against, I believe, what was it, Cena, Orton, and Kane. He's had matches against Kane. He's had matches against Randy Orton. I understand that. If you just said earlier on in 2014, like midway through the year, that Roman Reigns was getting a big monster push, if not a force, I would have sided with you and maybe agreed with you. I wouldn't have agreed with you if you said that was necessarily a bad thing because I didn't feel that it was at the time. However, at this particular moment, how can you say Roman Reigns is getting a really big monster push? For crying out loud, he is feuding with the big show. For crying out loud, he's been given some of the most ridiculous scripted promos that we have seen and heard in quite some time. And again, I will emphasize, he is feuding with the big show. The big show. The big slow. Who himself has transcended into that cane territory of sucking the life out of everything that he's involved in and taking the heat off of anything that he's potentially or possibly involved with. Roman Reigns is barely even being featured on TV. He might get a segment that lasts three minutes, five minutes. He might have a two-minute appearance. Maybe he has a full segment sometimes, but that's about it. When people are talking about this big monster Roman Reigns push, I just don't see it, and I just don't get where people are getting off saying this crap. He might be getting a push. They might be building him a little but is this really a monster push, especially to the point where it would seem to transcend into being a force job like so many of you believe it to be? I mean, here's a guy that still never wrestled with Triple H, still frankly hasn't had a lot of signature moments in a one-on-one -on -one situation, hasn't had a lot of marquee feuds, and let's not forget the fact that he was gone from injury for a couple of months and he just came back at TLC 2014. What has Roman Reigns really done since he's come back to justify a lot of this hatred in terms of him getting this big monster force push. What force are you talking about? What monster push are you referring to? What are you talking about, frankly? I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Now, I'm not sure that some of you know what the fuck you're talking about. Because clearly, based off of what we see and based off of the evidence, you cannot sit there and logically argue that Roman Reigns is getting this big monster push. So a lot of people, a lot of fans are hating on Roman Reigns for this imaginary monster push that they anticipate he's going to get, frankly, but that he's not actually receiving in reality at this time. Yet all the while, imagine this, magically, the member of the Shield who is getting by far the biggest push, if not by far the biggest push force, if you will, by far the most spotlight, by far the most attention devoted to him being Seth Rollins, and everyone is fine with that. And everybody thinks that's great. And everybody thinks that's glorious. Look, I'm not here to hate on Seth Rollins' push. For a company that desperately needs to create new stars, and for a guy like Seth Rollins, who out of the three members of the Shield, whether you want to admit it or not, was going to need the most effort and the most work in order to get him over in a big way, the WWE has done a lot to do just that. They have gotten behind this guy. I applaud that. And I appreciate that tremendously. They have done some very, very good things with Seth Rollins. However, to sit there and say that Roman Reigns is getting this big monster push, when you compare that to Seth Rollins, what in the fuck are you talking about? 
Let me get this straight. So Roman Reigns feuding with the Big Show and having a couple of crappy promos constitutes a monster push, if not a force. But yet Seth Rollins has been put in a position where, among other things, he's the one that broke up the shield. He's the one that's aligned with Triple H. He's the one that's feuded with Randy Orton. He's the one that's feuded with John Cena. Oh, by the way, he's the one that fucking won Money in the Bank. He's the one that went over on freaking Dean Ambrose. He's the one that's now also feuding with not only John Cena, but Brock Lesnar has the Money in the Bank briefcase, is getting another main event match at a freaking pay-per-view. But it's Roman Reigns that is getting the big monster push. It's Roman Reigns that's being forced down your throat. Do you have any idea how completely and totally ridiculous that that sounds? And again, I'm not against Seth Rollins getting a big push. Let me emphasize that before you take to the fleet flaming keyboard fingers of fire and blast me because you didn't fucking listen. I think it's great that Seth Rollins is getting this big push. I think it's tremendous that he has taken this opportunity and he's run with it and he's made himself into something. I applaud that. I think that's outstanding. And I wish the WWE would give more guys this opportunity. And I wish more guys that once given that opportunity that most of them don't actually get would actually do what Seth Rollins has done and taken it, run with it, and made the fucking most out of it and made themselves a star as a result. Kudos to him. Props to him. Mad props to him if you would. That's what the cool kids would say on the street. But Seth Rollins is the one, damn it all, that is getting the monster push. He's the one main eventing the Royal Rumble in the title match. He's the one that's had several other main event pay-per-view matches in 2014. Again, he's the one aligned with Triple H. He's the one aligned with Kane. He's the one that's feuding with John Cena and Randy Orton. And now he's fucking feuding with Brock Lesnar. So many of you that want to sit there and jump down Roman Reigns' fucking throat and bitch about that and what could happen with Brock Lesnar, he hasn't even gotten to that point yet. Frankly, we might not get to that point. We may very well be able to, but we haven't gotten there yet. That's no guarantee of it happening. Yet Seth Rollins is there. It's guaranteed. He's feuding with Lester and he's feuding with Cena. Hell, in part, they turned Brock Lester babyface because he was feuding with Seth Rollins. And now Seth Rollins goes into the Royal Rumble with a title opportunity and the Money in the Bank briefcase with Triple H on his side, with potential opponents still like Randy Orton and Freaky John Cena and Brock Lesnar. Maybe they're even going to flip Paul Heyman and align him with Seth Rollins. Excuse the fuck out of me, but if I'm looking at somebody getting a real monster push... And I'm seeing somebody that's really getting a force, if anything, based off of the clear-cut evidence presented in front of me, based off of what I've seen, I would think that would be Seth Rollins that fits into that category in Roman Reigns. So for all of you that sit there and bitch and moan and piss about Roman Reigns' big monster push, shut the fuck up. Until it actually happens, stop talking about it. Because clearly, based off of what we're seeing, it's not happening yet. And there's no guarantee at this particular moment that it even is going to. Seth Rollins is the one that's getting the big monster push. If you want to bitch about anything, bitch about how much more of a push Seth Rollins is getting than fucking Dean Ambrose is. What the hell did Seth Rollins do to be so much more spectacular than a Dean Ambrose to where Dean Ambrose is kind of sort of almost become an afterthought where Seth Rollins is getting this thrown at him and that thrown at him and this thrown at him and that thrown at him. If you're going to be angry, be angry about the right fucking thing. If you're going to be angry about somebody getting a push or not getting a push in terms of the members of the Shield. Maybe be angry about the fact that Dean Ambrose isn't getting the push that Seth Rollins is. Why do you only have to push one of them? Why do you only have to force one of them? Why can't all three of them be pushed and forced to a degree where they all become big monster stars? If you're going to be pissed off about anything, be pissed off about that. Roman Reigns' big push may come. But he's not getting it right now. If he wins the Rumble, goes on to main event, Mania, and then he wins the title, then worry about it. Then you can talk about it. But until that point in time, clearly Seth Rollins is getting the biggest push by far, even compared to freaking Ambrose, who I would deserve, deserves more of that push. So if you're going to sit there and bitch about Roman Reigns' push and totally overlook Seth Rollins' massive push and force that he's gotten over the past year now, do us all a favor and please just shut the fuck up.